All right, all right, check one, two, what's going on? It looks like we are live on some platforms, but not all of them. Got to get live on Instagram one time. All right, what up, what up, what up? All right, look at this, man, we getting there. I was about to swing this kettlebell around today, and I'm like, dude, you should never swing a kettlebell without bringing some people along for the journey. So I was like, dude, let's get after it, man. Let's swing some kettlebells. So for uh, people that are uh, all about that kettlebell life, man, uh, if you want to jump in and get some swings in with me today, let's do it. Uh, my goal today was to teach you five things that you probably didn't know about the kettlebell swing. Five things that are going to change the game for you on the kettlebell swing. This month, I told people, I'm going in. I'm going deep on the swing. Uh, not just the swing, the kettlebell in general. I want people to get some benefit and learn about this thing a little bit more. What is this kettlebell thing? Why do people love the kettlebell so much? So we'll have some fun. At any point today, if you've got questions, thoughts, concerns, uh, feel free to chime in and let me know. Uh, it does not look like LinkedIn wants to work for me today, so I'm just exiting out of that. All right, so I've got a couple people on here, a couple people on Instagram. All right, what up? Let's go. So if you guys want to have Coach Josh Gray, um, I love the kettlebell. This is Lionel. This is my personal kettlebell, good friend of mine. And other than that, that's all you need to know about me. We're just going to swing some kettlebells today. This won't be a very long thing. My goal is just to, like I said, do some swings myself and bring you guys along. I am going to warm up, though. I always warm up. I always get my mind right and my body right. So let's go ahead and take a big breath in. I just want to put away whatever I've been dealing with today and focus a little bit on me for the time being. So this is just some time for me right now. Hopefully this is time for you. I'm going to do my joint by joint check. I'm going to warm up for swings, and then I'm going to give you guys some tips as we go along with swings today. All right, so um, starting off, uh, we're going to start with some joint by joint mobility. Let's go to check your neck out. Let's get nice and tall. Unglue your neck. Three-way neck check up and down. Some nose, side to side nose. We got some here to shoulder. Something that feels good there. All right, let's go ahead and go into our T-spine. Uh, dragging the legs in the cage, Superman opens up to the sunlight. That's called dragging the Superman. Kind of moving our mid back or T-spine. Take out five of everything. If you do a lot of fitness on fire workouts with us on the on demand platform, you'll probably see that we do a similar warm up each class. This is just making sure people are really starting to get to know their bodies better. Oh, man, just kind of unglue the nervous system, right? One of the very effective warm ups. Let's bring our arms out nice and wide. We'll do little circles. And then we'll do just little baby circles, warm those shoulders up. Let's go back the other way. I need to move this guy over a little bit. So bear with me. You guys are going to go on a trip. Ooh, it's a trip there, all right. And also, forgive me if the gym is in shambles. That is okay. We are here rebuilding this entire fitness facility for all the peeps out there. You get a behind the scenes look at some of this stuff going on over here. All right, so now for the shoulder circle, let's get one full range of shoulders to go to reach up. So I'm going to point forward. I'm going to slowly bring my arms all the way up and over. And let's go back the other way. That's all we're going to do for those. Let's check out the elbows a little bit. Some elbow circles, just like gluing those joints. Go the other direction. All right, we're going to go to the hips next. Hips are going to be very necessary for us today. This is actually my joint check. I'm going to be doing a little bit more of a specific warm up for your kettlebell swing. Right, about five of those each way. My hips are from the set, so I need to that. And then single leg, I'm just going to kind of connect my ankles a little bit here. All right, other side. Very simple check here today. Okay, so those are our joint by joint checks. Always do it. Uh, I just never skip on the warm up stuff. Uh, the one time you don't warm up is the one time you get unpredictable results. All right, next thing we're going to talk about is you need three things to be able to swing a kettlebell properly. Uh, if you know those three things, comment those in. Uh, a lot of you guys that coach with me, train with me, that have done a lot of this work, you need three things. To be able to swing a kettlebell effectively, what are those three things? Okay, these are biomechanical questions. So you don't need a kettlebell. You don't need a good attitude. It's an elbow grease. You need, you need some scientific stuff, some biomechanical stuff. Uh, I wonder if anybody's going to comment in on me. If you've been on here, you need three things to swing a kettlebell. Anybody go once, go in twice, looking for a comment or two. The three things are hip extension. You need your hips to extend properly. Oh, I got a comment coming through here. Proper hip hinge. That's close. That's close. We need hip extension, which is also part of the hip hinge. We need hip extension. We need glute activation, and we need core stability. Those are three things that you must have in order to swing a kettlebell well. So the first thing we need is we need our hips to extend properly. One of my favorite ways to demonstrate that is with a very simple hip flexor strip. I take a knee, I shift my belt buckle up towards my chest, 
and I feel that stretch in the front of my groin here. Okay, that's called a hip flexor stretch. Uh, this is the golden grail for a lot of you chronic low back pain people. You're dealing with low back pain all the time, you can do a hip flexor stretch every now and then. You're really trying to shift your belt level up towards the ceiling, scoop your hips forward. Another way to say that is to push your heel in the ground, push your knee in the ground, and pull them towards each other. All right, we should be feeling a big stretch to the front side of our hip here. So it's like the flexor stretch on the side, belt buckle shift to the chest. Your hips should be engaged, hips are extending. All right, let's take one big inhale, one big exhale. Let's go to the second part of that, which is a glute activation. We need glute activation. So we're going to do that in the glute range. So I'm going to go on my back here. I'm going to bring my toes off the ground. I'm going to think outside because I don't want my ribs sticking up. So outside, glutes tight, hips up. You should feel a very similar thing going on the front of the hips. But now our glute texture should be different. You're extending your hips by activating your glutes. Outside, glutes tight, hips up. Let's get five of those. Outside, glutes tight, hips up. Right, if you're looking around, we should be feeling some of the back of the legs and the glutes, not necessarily the quad in front of the legs. All right, we're going to do about five of those. Make sure those get them on. And we're going to over one time, and at the last piece for us, if you get course to go, we need to make sure we can keep our spine braced and protected as we're going to do the swing today. So I'm going to take an upright plank for that. I'll be in my hand in a push up position. I'm going to put my feet together. I'm going to squeeze my quads together, my knees together. I'm going to lock my elbow, my arm pits in. By putting my elbow tips forward, I'm going to squeeze my butt a little bit more. I'm going to grab and grab my fingers. I'm going to get nice and tight in my plank here. If you get your plank to shake because you're so tight, you're really doing well. We're going to do five more seconds. Four, three, two, and one. All right. All right. So here's what's going to happen today. I'm going to do about 20 swings per set. And as I do 20 swings per set, I'm going to give you a thought on every kettlebell swing set that I do today. And we're going to get through 100 swings together. All right, so I'm gonna give you a hundred. I'm gonna give you 20 swings and a thought, and then you can practice that thought as we go along. If this is all elementary for you, like dude, I swing kettlebells all the time. You just want to do some swings with me, dude. Knock it out, do some swings with me. I'm good with it. All right, so I've got a couple notes for the people following on Instagram and on not on Instagram. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Instagram. I probably want people following on Facebook. So the first thing we're talking about today is setup and stance. So how do I start my kettlebell swing? This is number one in my five tips for you today. This is one of the first ones I think is really broken. Somebody told me one time ago, a long time ago, the way you enter a tunnel is going to be the way you exit the tunnel. So if you start the exercise poorly, you're probably going to ride out a poor exercise the whole set, um, right? You're not going to pick up steam along the way. So what's a poor setup in a swing? Poor setup in a swing is every sport, everything we do has a certain language or body language to it, right? If I was going to play football, this is like my ready stance. If I was going to deadlift, I get tight before I pick the bar up. If I'm going to squat, I put it on the right spot on my shoulders, I get nice and tight, I grab the ground with it, and I get tight. Like, there's, there's a sequence to getting set up. But for some reason, the kettlebell swing, people just want to walk up to that thing, ground back, and just kind of get into some weird back swings or something. And that is not how we want to fire our swings, right? The first swing counts. So here's how we're going to set up today. I'm going to start by just starting up about a foot away from the kettlebell. Butt back, knees back, tall spine. I'm going to sit into my hip hinge. Right away, I'm trying to activate my back side, my posterior chain, glutes and hamstrings. One thing you can do is take your hands and your hips crease out, push back on your hips. You want your hips to go as far back as they can, then you let your knees bend as an afterthought to get you the belt. Okay? From this setup, I'm going to tilt the belt towards me. I'm almost there, but I'm not tight yet. Even though my position's decent, I'm not tight yet. The very last step here is I've got to screw my shoulders in and counterbalance my weight with the kettlebell swing. Right now I'm loaded. All right, this is my initial start position. So one more time, I set up. I take a good stance. I cast my shoulders, and the first swing is going to happen through my lat. So I'll just take that on my next one.
We'll see if I can keep my headphones on during my swing set today. So the first thing we talked about today was your stance, your initial setup, okay? Second thing we talked about that you saw there, I'm just gonna fire you your swing today, so I'm gonna go pretty quick through all this. Second thing we saw is in the setup, you need to turn your lats on. How do I pack my shoulders? I engage my lats. Your lats are a huge muscle group in the human body. Your glutes and lats are two of the biggest muscle groups in the human body. What's cool with the swing is we work both. We work glutes and lats. It's like burning the fuel of an 18 wheeler versus the fuel of like a Ford Fiesta we work on our biceps with some smaller muscle groups. Right, we're in a big bang for our butt with the swings. Your lats are also the postural muscles for your shoulders. They keep your shoulders safe, depressed, contracted, centered, right? Your lats are super important. Two places our lats are working in the swing. In the beginning set, I've got to learn how to pack my shoulders. And my first initial swing happens through the lats, almost like somebody's pushing through your lats, like a straight up pull down, okay? So lats is number one there. The other part that you're using your lats is in the swing. You're not just as strong as what you can lift, you're also as strong as what you can resist. So when that bell comes up, if that bell pulls me off center, engage the lats, right? So by keeping my shoulder pack, I'm getting more benefit out of the swing, and I'm resisting the force that I'm driving up in the swing, which is giving me like a eccentric load on the lats. Pretty interesting, so let's see how that works. So again, here's not lat activation, all right? I don't screw my shoulders in, the bell's kind of facing down when I swing it, it's gonna flip back a little bit. My shoulders are rounded, my neck is short, Right? I see this all the time in the swing. Short neck, no lat activation. Neck should be long, posture should be tall in your swing. Every time, always, it should be robotic, okay? So now we're working on our last one. Now I'm gonna try and keep my hips on this. Got 20, let's try this. <laughs> we're try 20 swings. Technical difficulty with the headphones. Okay. Here we go. So, and I find my stance, I didn't like the way I set up, so I didn't like it, I'll start it over. Strong hip hinge, tilt the belt, turn the lats on, half the shoulder, hike through the lats, don't the belt over. This is also why it's important to keep your arms straight in the swing as much as possible. It's more leverage on your lats to do the work to keep your shoulders back. Push the floor away with your feet. Number on, I think it's close to 20. We're gonna call it. I can't count. If you've ever trained with me, you know good and well I can't count. That's the first thing you know about training with me. All right, so that was lat activation. All right, let's talk about hard style. You guys are hearing it right now. What you're hearing is known as hard style breathing, or what's known as biomechanical breathing. It's kind of like a fighter's breath. And what we can practice is if you smile, Roll your tongue to the back of your teeth and push out air violently. See if you get tight anywhere in your body except your neck. Specifically, you get tight in your belly. Now, where do we see this at? Where do we see this hard style breathing or this biomechanical breathing? We see it in MMA fighting, right? When people are throwing punches, they want to get tight to deliver force. They stay tight and they deliver force. Bruce Lee was king of this, right? Yeah! Bruce Lee was king. He didn't punch you like this. He punched you car style. It was kind of one strike, one kill. And the way he found that was through diaphragmatic pressure, intra-abdominal pressure. He learned how to use his diaphragm to tighten his entire system and body. It's actually crazy when you learn how to use your diaphragm. Your diaphragm actually contracts your gut, compacts that all, and makes it like an armored inside your body. It's pretty cool. So this is why when you see like dudes, uh, I think uh, I think Houdini was famous for taking a punch. He pull a random big man out of the eyes like hippie, whatever you got, and they can hit him. He can take that punch because he's so tight in the middle. So that's our next step in the swing is to find that tension through your breathing. So the way we're going to do that is I'm going to down swing. I'm going to inhale through my nose. As I exhale, I push the floor away and I follow my swing through. I'm going to release a hard exhale. Hard exhale, grunt. Moan, spit, whatever works for you, spy with me. Uh, let's try 20 hard style breaths. If you do it well, you'll, you'll, it'll be hard for 20 swings. 
20 swings, hard side. One strike, one kill. 20 swings, all the other stuff matters. Set up well, after the last, hard side right. Definitely not going to keep the headphones on for this whole set. That's okay. Whew. Almost lost on my Instagram feed. What's up? My phone's dying. That's my life. All right. So we talked about hard style breathing. Hopefully you guys got a couple of those. Whew. Hard style exhale. It's about power. Okay. If you can master that, you'll see that in deadlift, squats. That's one of the big keys to crazy strength is intra-abdominal pressure. Okay. And for some guys that are just crazy strong, some of them know how to get there and they don't even know what it's called or how it works. They just know that when I'm under the bench press, they got to do something, right? They know when they get in a fight, they're making noise. They don't even know why, but they're getting hard every swing, right? All right. Now, number four for us, top triangle. Top triangle. So in the down swing of the kettlebell, what I see a lot of times is people swing underneath their knees in the down swing. I'm only giving you guys five things today to talk about on the swings, and there are so many more <laughs> that we can cover, one of which is going to be about how to hug your bicep to rib cage forearms to inner thigh. We'll talk about that as well. I'm going to explain that today as your top triangle. Top triangle is your crotch and your knees make a triangle. The kettlebell should swing through the top of the triangle, not underneath your knees. This makes it a lot easier for you to catch the kettlebell's force with your glutes and hamstrings and not necessarily with your single back. If I swing it here and I'm disconnected, it's very hard at that way. But if I can catch the bell with my whole body, it's a lot easier to stabilize the kettlebell, okay? Um, one cool trick for this, let's see if I have one real I think I mentioned the gyms and channels. <laughs> I'm having a hard time finding things. But a small foam roll would be a good trick for this. So what you can do is put this foam roll in between your legs here. And if you smack the foam roll, you're squatting and you're not using your hips enough in the hinge. So I'm going to use that for the 20 swings in the next set. The only catch is it's hard for me to. Top triangle. So, really cool exercise. Giving yourself a space saver, whatever you want to call that, something to kind of help you uh, flight path through kettlebell. I think what I'm trying to say. It's a really good tip. I'm only 100 swings in. I'm sweating. I'm, I'm, I'm breathing heavy. My abs are sore. My forearms are lit up. My glutes and hamstrings are pumped. The kettlebell swing will do a lot for you if you do it well. All right, this is a, a good message behind the swing. Minimal effective dose. Just doing a little bit of swings is enough to get huge benefits without overtraining or putting your body through so much stress that you can't move the next day. I don't need to be sore off the kettlebells. I need to get better off the kettlebells. That's my philosophy as a coach. I want you 1% better today. I don't care how much you hurt after a training session or computer or one of my workouts. But if you have a goal, I'll get you there. If you want to win a race, I'll get you there. It doesn't mean you have to get there. I'll show you how to get there the right way using science and sound principles. All right, minimum effective dose is how we think long game. Long game is how do we do stuff that we want to do forever without hurting ourselves or putting our system through just too much stress. All right, now the last part of the kettlebell swing, these are just five things I saw recently. I'm like, dude, I got to talk about this somehow. 
The last one I call playing chicken with your zipper. And this one's really close to the top triangle piece. Playing chicken with your zipper is one of the hardest concepts, especially for us used to get. But when the bell's coming down, I want to wait. I want to wait. I'm still waiting. Still waiting. Still waiting. Hinge. Last second hinge. It's like the bell's coming for me. I want to wait, 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 wait. Hinge. Last second hinge. So the bell's coming. Wait. I'm still in my tall plank, my upright plank. Wait. 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 Hinge. It's like your body, the kettlebell almost pulls you into your hand. It's crazy, man. I've been training kettlebells for 13 years. I've never had anybody wrap themselves in the kettlebell. But that's always the first stop. Oh, what happens if I don't move? Move. <laughs> move. Get out the way. All right, so we've got uh, our last set of sleeves is about playing chicken with your top. You're playing chicken with your zipper. Now, again, though, you got to wait, 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 then hinge. Some of you, you even demonstrate this right now. I promise you're leaving early. Most of you guys are going here, and the bell hasn't even started coming down yet. Now look what happens. The kettlebell is up underneath my knees, right? So that's the bottom triangle. We wanted the top triangle. How do I get there? I, I wait longer. Wait and then go, okay? Last way I would explain that is that your biceps should almost come to your ribcage. Your forearm should make it to your inner thigh, all right? So in a good downswing, you see there's no daylight. You couldn't get underneath my armpit. If I could get underneath here, you're probably not engaging your lats enough, and you went too early, right? Wait, 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 hinge. And there's no daylight. All right, let's try it. Last set, best set. Twenty good swings. Be impatient. Play chicken with your zipper. Full discretion. I've never trained this many people online without being able to see them before. So if you rack yourself with the zipper, it doesn't go. <laughs> doesn't go against my track record. I just finished a second ago. That's on you. Move out of the way. All right, we got twenty swings. Let's see. Make sure we set up well. Catch your shoulders. Height through the lap. Heart style breathing. Top triangle. Play chicken with your zipper. Last set, best set. And there we got it. 100 kettlebell swings, hard style. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, simple dosage. 100 swings done in any form. <laughs> Five sets of 20, 10 sets of 10, uh, 50, 40, 10, I don't know, uh, 30, 20, 10, 30, 20, 10. However you want to do your swings. That didn't work. That was 120. I can't do math. Anyways. You get it, do 100 swings, not to the point where you're so sore that you can't move the next day, but do 100 swings so you feel good, you feel like you got some work, you're breathing a little heavy, abs are getting tight, hip flexors got open, glutes got activated, and that is a very, very multifaceted movement. All right, man, I hope you guys have a phenomenal evening. That was about 25 minutes. I was gonna try and nail 15 today, I can't do that. I'm trying. <laughs> man, if you guys have any, Questions about the swing, uh, hit me up, man. Uh, we are on uh, the Fitness on Fire On Demand platform. Every day, four classes a day, and we're adding multiple types of classes and niches with our coaches. All of our coaches have different specialties. Kettlebells happen to be mine, but if you're a runner, obstacle racing athlete, you're a calisthenics person, yoga specialist, folks who are in the range of motion, we have a solid team to help you out that stuff. So if you guys want to catch more workouts with us, we do four live workouts a day. We have semi-private and private sessions we're doing virtually. Man, I would love to work with you guys more. And then you will see more of these kettlebell tips and tricks from me coming up all the time. So just kind of keep an eye on the different networks. If you haven't already, click subscribe, like, uh, connect with me so I can connect with you a little bit further. We can talk bells all day. Kettlebells, baby. Let's go. Have a phenomenal week. Thank you for joining me for some swings today. Much love. Take care.